We're excited. Me too. Yeah, so we're, we're very cash. Cash. Casual operation here. What's up? Joselito, long time no see. <laughs> I guess I yesterday. Kelly Sita, you as well. Janine, I haven't seen you in, it's been at least 24 hours. No, 48 hours. <laughs> whenever we last did this. John, we have a lot of like repeat attenders. So it's been really Ooh. fun. I just feel like, I just feel like it's people I get to hang out with. So. I like that. Repeat yeah. attenders. Repeat attenders. What's up, Rebecca? How's it going? Yay, Christina. Sta. Abby, we were literally just chatting today. I'm telling you, I'm excited about the throwback Thursday on Go Formative. They make it so freaking right because I, like, also, we know how kids do us. They do us dirty when they go to the next level. And they're like, oh, I had Mr. Bracey last semester. We didn't do any Latin. And you're like, oh, thank- you're full of crap. Like, I literally heard you every all the time. They do us dirty, and they know what they're doing. So oh, I yeah. will have them knowing all the names of everything we've ever done because they can't. <laughs> like, we've got kids, like, going to three in the fall. And if they're like, I don't know, it was a pandemic. She didn't speak Spanish. Okay. Okay. Like I did, we can't, mm-mm. my colleagues are amazing. They would be like, whatever, sure. You know, like we, d- we do not believe the children, but I just kind of want to head it off anyway. So I'm going to start like oh, throwing in some review sections on Thursday. It, I actually, I mean, as a quick preview, mm-hmm. like that's actually part of my presentation. I have a Shut strategy up. for that. Amazing. That are specific we thing is in there. Right now? <laughs> We're like this. I know. It. What's the, what's the line in uh, Step Brother? That's not what it's called. Stepbrothers? Did we just become best friends? Did we just become best friends? <laughs> What's the name of that movie? Is it Step Brothers? Step Brothers. Okay. Ah, I nailed it. That's the, I, mm, sometimes I don't get those references right, but I got it. No, that's a classic. That's the one you want to get Yay. right. That's a- Raina, are you the... Pro- oh, Raina, I love that this time worked out for you. That's amazing. Kelly Sita. I was convinced, Kelly, that you were the Ola name. Wait, were you? Did you rename it? No, there was an Ola in the waiting room. And I was like, might be Kelly Sita. But alas, a who? It was not. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and tone says, awesome. Well, welcome everybody. Um, Luz, uh, no worries. I just, saw, was it you, Steve? Yay. I let you in. And then I was like, who is, so then I put you back in the waiting room. Cause I didn't know. Um, <laughs> I figured it might be John being like April Fools. So I was like, uh, in for a second out. So yay, Steve. <laughs> and Kelly, I just saw you. I was just talking about you. I told John, we were just in the same thing. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think a lot of this is actually going to tie in. So glad you guys could make Boys. it a little bit earlier than usual. We are recording, um, unless John says to stop and then we can turn it off, but it'll be, it'll, we'll just get the beginning. Yes, just hi. And then that's it. <laughs> um, you just get to see our faces and then that's it. But uh, <laughs> welcome. My name is Meredith White. I teach Spanish one and two just outside of Atlanta, Georgia in Gwinnett County. We've been hybrid all year. So the Twitch is not as visible now as it was. I actually just got my second shot today. So um, if I just keel over, <laughs> John, let me make you the co-host while we're <laughs> now my, my cousin is a nurse and she was like, okay, do this, this, and this. And like, you should be fine. I was fine. This cousin was also like a combat nurse in Vietnam. So she's Whoa. tougher than the, right. I was like, uh, Grace, I don't know that you need to be giving out like you and I are not of the same stock. Okay. I'm a wimp. <laughs> so anyway, so, so far I'm fine, but she had lots of, she had lots of uh, recommendations. So no worries. So we'll post the recording and we'll stay hydrated and dehydrated. Hopefully it's not too early and you're not, <laughs> but I figured Never too early. Cares with a lovely Riesling. So there you go. Um, yay. So welcome. I want to let John introduce himself and we'll get rocking and rolling. And in the meantime, I'm also going to just for funsies, repaste the link for like where you signed up just kind of the original like the mothership of all the information and it also has the link as of about three weeks ago whenever I kind of got my caca together and did it um, a wakelet collection for each speaker so any links that are shared in the chat I pop open another browser and I add to our wakelet collection so if you've got like resources if John says something and you're like oh girl yes stick it in the chat if you don't mind it being like shared in public and then anything that he shares as well, I'll stick it into the wakelet. So it's kind of, um, for those watching the recording, especially, and I know a couple of you can only stay a little while, you can kind of see, like, as we might say out loud, like, oh, I see in the chat. Now it's kind of like you have the chat. But if you literally want the chat, I can also send you that file. So um, whatever you need, just let me know. Without further ado, John, you want to tell us where you are, what you're doing these days, and also your setting, because it changes soon, right? Or 
or it already changed? Oh, it's gonna it's gonna change it. It's it's complicated. <laughs> well, oh, listen. <laughs> it's you know it's, it's yeah. So I'm John Bracy. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. I'm yeah. So uh, I'll, oh, funny. I'll, so lay, I'll lay it out for you. Yeah, it's complicated. <laughs> I'll, I'll lay it down for you. So, so first, of who I am? I'm I'm John Bracy. I'm a Latin teacher in uh in Massachusetts out here. Um, I'm teaching at Belmont right now in Belmont, Mass. I've been teaching in Massachusetts. I've been teaching Latin in Massachusetts for the past 10 years or so. Ooh. Yeah, I do stuff. What else do I do? I do some things. I do like, I, I present a lot of stuff. I write stuff sometimes. Tweet stuff. Um, tweet stuff. I tweet stuff a lot. Hmm. Tweet stuff a lot. What else do I do? I think I, I've got a website apparently. Got a website up there. See that? Got a website up there. God, what else do I do? <laughs> um, I'm uh, work with Martina Bex to create the Latin version of Sumus or Somos. And I, I do a lot of stuff. In fact, I'm doing something right after this. Yes. Like I do, I do a lot of stuff. I do a lot of things. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been at this. I've been at this for a while. I've been relatively successful at it. Uh, what have I been? I was, um, I won Latin teacher of the year for Massachusetts a few years back. So yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It was a few years back though. So. <laughs> but I suck now. <laughs> yeah, I suck now. I suck now. It was good then. It was a fluke year. I was on a streak, but now, nope, now I suck. <laughs> garbage, total garbage right now. <laughs> well, kind of. I mean, this year <laughs> for me, that might be true. So <laughs> yeah, for this year, fair enough. Yeah, I'm kind of garbage. Yeah, a little bit. This year, I'm not great. Yeah. But this year, I've been in my situation. We started off remote and we held out for a long time. And then we've been hybrid for a while, which sucks. And then um, because our our governor is uh, has a uh, there's stuff where your head, you know where your brain is, like in like there's something else in there. I don't know what, but it's not a brain. And our like secretary of education is just like a like a psychopath. And so they're going to shove us all back in full time in like a week or so anyway, and we're all going to get COVID and it's going to be great. So that's my situation. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> straight up. Awesome. High fives all around. But I imagine we're all in various states of that, <laughs> of living through being sacrificed as a profession. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so we're all there. So yeah, so don't let the chipper appearance and the, uh, and the, uh, the, the various things that we show you. Don't let that fool you into thinking that we're also not getting our, our, our asses handed to us this year. So it's, it's, it's exactly. all of us. Oh Everything. yeah. Oh yeah. So just making sure that you, you know that, <laughs> but anyhow, you came here to see John Bracy talk about grammar, which is, which to me is the funniest thing to say, but I like, <laughs> so we're going to have some fun today. We're going to explore grammar as a concept, where that phrase comes from, and we're going to talk um, about how I approach grammar and how I think it would help you to approach grammar, and hopefully you'll get something out of it and feel empowered leaving here today. That's my goal, is to leave you feeling empowered and energized, like you got something to do, and you got a sensation of, there's a lot of stuff I don't have to do. So I'm here to free you. Let's do this. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get it. All right. First, I want to tell you very quickly about how I got here. Before I lay out to you what I do with grammar, I want to tell you um, very quickly my journey. Now, I am a Latin teacher. So I managed to get through um, university program in, in Latin and ancient Greek at UMass Amherst. And then I got my master's degree at Boston College in, uh, in Greek and Latin. And <clears throat> I, for some reason, as a terrible student, was able to do well in Latin. I have no idea why, no clue, because nobody did well in Latin. Everybody did awful in Latin. <clears throat> it's basically, it was just grammar. It was just grammar charts. It was grammar charts, and then sometimes you just memorize something in English and then try to recognize that on, a, on an assessment, but it was really just charts. You memorize a bunch of charts. 
It's like, here's the chart. You put the chart in there and you conjugate the thing and then define the thing. That's all it was. And for some unknown reason, I was good at that. No idea why. No clue. But so I went through that. And for some reason, I was crushing it. And I was like, hey, sweet, I'm good at something. And it wasn't lost on me that nobody else was. That it was like that every year there was fewer and fewer people there. And the people got weirder looking as they went along. It was a strange group by the end. Very strange group by the end. But I was raised through this grammar system. And I knew that I was good at it. But because I was such a terrible student otherwise throughout most of my life, I was acutely aware that this probably wasn't working for any, like wasn't working, right? Because it was like me and like three or four other white guys by like the, the final level class. And I had about three or four years where it's just that. And I was like, where did everybody else go? Like whatever we're doing, this can't be right because there's nobody else here. And so when I started teaching, I started teaching middle school, which I love, taught middle school for eight years. Um, when I started teaching, I was like, okay, I'm going to make this work for everybody. And so I went into my classroom and I was like, yeah, I'm going to make grammar work for everybody. I'm going to make these grammar charts understandable for everybody. Exactly. I'm going to reach the kids through my innovative grammar charts. And it did not work. It did not work at all. It was the, uh, the kid who got it like the first time I explained it also got it every single year through when everybody else never got it. It never happened. I went through this process. I was even a tutor. I used to charge people $100 an hour to sit there with their kid <laughs> for a couple hours every week. And I'd sit there and I would work on grammar charts with them for their Latin class. No progress. I don't think it made any progress throughout that at all. I think some of their grades went up, but it was, every single day, it was like the very first day. Mm -hmm. Nothing was going in. Nothing was happening. And so I was like, okay, there's got to be a way to do this. I'm teaching middle school. My high school colleagues seem like everything's working for them. I got to figure out how this works. I must just be an awful teacher. Mm. I got to figure this out. And then I had an aha moment where I thought I'd figured it out. To the right of the screen there, you'll see, or whatever direction is facing you, Tigavris Paruski. Do you speak Russian? I had failed Russian in high school, but knew of it enough to recognize it. And I was after school with, a, with an eighth grader who was struggling so badly. None of the grammar stuff made sense. And I sat down with her and I was tutoring her, I was trying to help her. We just were getting nowhere. And then she said like, uh, oh, it's getting late. I got to call my mom real quick and let her know it's going to be an extra couple minutes. Picks up the phone. And it's like, hello, mama. And like I said, I just started talking in Russian to like her mom. I was like, I was like, you speak fluent Russian. I was like, and, and if you are familiar with Russian and Latin, they both have like, they're so similar in like the way that they break down, like with like case endings and all that stuff. And I was like, that's it. I got it. And so as soon as she got off the phone, I was like feeling real good about myself. I was like, I got this now. I got it. It's like Latin grammar works just the way that uh that russian grammar works so you know how the accusative direct object you know how you use that and how you declined i was like and then she's like no idea what you're talking about but is it but you but russia is the same thing it's like the genitive it's got like the dative the accusative it's got all those things and she's like i just speak russian and then that's when it that's when it really hit me i was like hang on she speaks Russian, has no effing idea what I'm talking about when I'm talking about this grammar stuff. No clue. She is fluent in Russian. No explicit grammatical knowledge of any kind. And she is fluent in Russian. I have mountains of explicit grammar knowledge in my head. And I am garbage at Latin. I mean, garbage. When I got my master's degree, I was a clown. People would be like, hey, I got this tattoo in Latin. Like, what does it say? Like, I don't know. Uh, it looks like it's subjunctive, I guess. I don't know. 
I didn't, I knew it nothing. Like literally, I couldn't read anything. It was like it's like we well, translated the Aeneid. Eh. Like what does it say? I don't know. Like I just I, I memorized English when the when the test came around. I, I didn't know anything, but. So this made it so clear to me that there was this massive, massive gulf between these two things. So I knew all the grammar in the world and did not know a language. This person knew none of the grammar in the world and was fluent in a language. Mm. So I started putting these things together and I was like, okay, I think my entire concept of what languages are and how they work is likely wrong. So I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and figure this out. And so I went out and started looking for answers. So I am going to show you the sum total of what I found out from learning from lots of people, from second language acquisition researchers to master teachers. Some of the people are in this room right now, or this virtual room right now. And I'll show you what it is and what it's um, culminated in and how, what it looks like in the classroom. So first, all right, so actful, right? So they coined this phrase here, teach grammar as a concept and use in context as one of their core practices, right? Teach grammar as a concept, use in context, students focus on meaning before form. So I dug deeper into this and pulled out a couple of quotes that I thought were, were very telling, which led me to believe that actual is onto something. <laughs> I think they're being very diplomatic about it, but they're on to something. So I pulled these gems right out of their description here of, uh, of their core practice. So we got the first one up is grammar should be addressed within meaningful communicative context as one element of language proficiency. Meaningful communicative context. The second quote, grammar is an important element of communication. But research shows that explicit teaching of grammar has little effect on people's language acquisition, comprehension, or writing abilities. So buried kind of in like, you know, I think a very diplomatic piece of writing, mm. they launched what I think is a very direct shot at I think the mistake that I was making and a lot of us continue to make, they just laid it to waste right there. Explicit teaching of grammar has little effect on people's language acquisition, comprehension, or writing abilities. What's really left there, isn't it? Mm. So I thought I'd throw that out because we're going to be a uh, addressing this concept of, uh, of teaching grammar as a concept in context as one of Actful's um, core practices. So allow me to show you what I've been doing with this. So I came up with what I like to call the Bracy Principles of Teaching Grammar, all of which I have taken from a variety of people who are way smarter than me. And I've just compiled them into a ball that I like to call the Bracy Principles of Teaching Grammar. All of these will be explicitly explained to you, and you'll see examples later. Just know that they're coming. Number one, don't hide it. Number two, don't grade it. Number three, don't correct it. Number four, answer all questions. Number five, probably don't do it. And then six, don't get fired. If you've ever attended a John Bracey workshop or talk of any kind, and I give you a list of action steps, don't get fired is on, I think, all of them. So again, whatever I tell you to do, don't get yourself fired over it. Mm. Don't get yourself fired over it. There's ways to do mm. what you believe to be the right thing to do and not get fired most of the time. And even if you're in that situation where you're like, I kind of want to get fired, don't get fired. Put that resume out there start responding to some job postings, but don't get fired. Don't get fired. Mm. All right. So let's start with the first principle. And again, the list will be repeated, but I always like to start with my action steps. Okay. Principle number one here, don't hide it. Don't hide grammar. Shelter vocabulary, not grammar. That's the comprehensible input mantra. Shelter vocabulary, not grammar. That's one of the hardest lessons to learn and that's why I put it up there because I still struggle with making myself do that. 
It is the exact opposite of everything that we experienced as language learners. Shelter vocabulary, not grammar. Every textbook you've ever seen, every grammar-based scope and sequence tells you the same thing. They're all arranged the same way. Here's a mountain of new words and a grammar concept. So you will have an entire story written in the present tense with like 700 completely new unseen words, but they figure, oh, you just memorize those. And, but we're working on the present tense and you can't see the future tense until you've learned the present tense. And so as you go through, by the end of like, you know, year three for like the five people who made it that far, they are seeing for the first time, like what? The future? I can say what's going to happen. I can, I can say, what are you doing later? Or what's what? Oh, wow. Like it's brand new to them. There's no reason to do that. Our brains don't work that way. There is no reason to hide grammar. When you talk to kids, we don't hide grammar. If you look at children's books, mm. like books for small kids, they're not sheltering grammar. They're limiting the number of words of like unique words. They're not sheltering grammar. They're not like, well, you can say, I would not, could not. And perfect. This is what I'll say here. I've, I've even wrote the quote down because I know I'd forget it. From Green Eggs and Ham, right? I will not eat green eggs and ham. I will not eat them, Sam, I am. Oh my goodness, we've got personal pronouns. <laughs> oh, we got the future tense. We got all sorts of stuff going on here. We have the vocative case. We've got, oh, there's a lot of stuff. There's even conditionals in there. There's subjunctive conditionals that show up all throughout that. There's only 50 words, 50 unique words in green eggs and ham, but tons of grammar stuff that's supposed to be difficult. It's not. It's not. There's no reason, there's no research-based reason to be avoiding using all of the grammar. There's plenty to avoid using all of the words, but there's none that says hide grammar from people. You don't have to. From day one, you can start using natural language, but make sure they understand it and make sure you're using a small number of words so they're not overwhelmed. I feel That's like just... you were witness to like my first five or six years teaching because what you're describing, <laughs> I feel personally attacked and I feel seen. And honest, I'm ending the call uh, because, because that's exactly it, right? You were like, ooh, how do you say went? Sorry, Rebecca, I can't tell you that till unit seven, but get excited. You know, and Rebecca's like, I don't give a crap about unit seven. Like, like woohoo, right? We're, well, yeah, we're all, <laughs> we're all word nerds. So if our teacher said that to us, we were like, oh yeah, unit seven, but like, wait. Us, but we're not normal. Like, what does Bob Patrick say? We're weird. We're not normal. Stop it. Like, <laughs> exactly. We're the like, weird ones. We're the Literally weird ones. Literally everyone that that worked for is like in this call right now. <laughs> Every single one right is currently here. working as a language teacher. Because we're literally the only ones. It's like your neighborhood. If you can't identify the crazy neighbors, you're the crazy neighbors, period. Exactly. <laughs> so we're the weirdos. <laughs> exactly. We're the weird ones. So we have to recognize that. We're the weird ones. We're not here because we're better than anybody. We're here because right. we're strange. Yep. Our brains work in a very bizarre way. And guess what? The language has been around since the human species has been around. There's more people in the world than language teachers. So all these people who flunked out of language classes, guess what? They know languages. Some of them know the language of the class they flunked out of. I know native French speakers who failed French class taught by someone who's not a native French speaker. We are so weird. So, so weird. weird. Mm -hmm. And so we have to do these things that are counterintuitive to us because we're so strange, but it's not counterintuitive to anybody else. Like it's, it, many of you in this room have had this experience. When you try to explain the basics of this stuff to like anybody else, yep. like just like a parent, anyone, they're like, a, like, yeah, you know that, Explicit grammar instruction doesn't really lead to language acquisition. They're like, well, yeah, I mean, of course, right? That, has that literally worked for anybody? It didn't work for me. I can't name a single person that's worked for. And then you're like, why, do, why don't we know that? <laughs> know. <laughs> but like, why don't we know? We're like, are you sure? Are you, but are you sure? Like, you, yes, they're sure. It's like, oh, okay, really? Yeah, I, I always expect to get like, a, like resistance from the general public and never do. <laughs> It's just from other language teachers. It's the funniest thing. 
but this is totally intuitive to everybody else. That's so true. Isn't it so weird? (sighs) But that's the thing. So this is intuitive to everybody else. You limit the words you use, but you don't limit the grammar. You don't have to. It's not how we naturally do things. So I free you. You can stop. Ooh, the next one I'm freeing you from. Don't grade it. Don't you grade it. Mm. Don't do it. But- <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I know you want to do it. Don't do it. Don't grade for grammatical accuracy. Don't do it. I know you want to. <laughs> I'm asking you very nicely to consider seriously stopping. Don't do it. Grammatical accuracy is not a feature of developing language. It's not, it may never occur. You may be in the intermediate high phase forever. That's pretty normal. Mm-hmm. It's, you don't generally get native like fluency in a language that isn't a native language of your own. It typically doesn't happen. That's why we have sexy accents. I love accents. Accents are awesome. I'm not like, oh, only they just talk like I talk. It'll be so much better. Like, no, it's we love accents. Accents are gorgeous. I talk with a fake accent sometimes because it sounds better than like a native English accent to me. (laughs) Right? Like accents are beautiful. It's normal. That's how human beings talk. And the more the language you acquire, the less accurate was accurate it's going to become. That is the very nature of language acquisition. The mm-hmm. more that goes in there, the more your brain is mapping, the more scrambled it gets. So that's why you might have year one, they're like, uh, oh yes, like, don't they a star? Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then like, then like year three, they're like, uh, 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 don't they say, uh, don't they say, uh, 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 don't they a star? Uh, and you're like, what happened? What happened? No, you knew this. You knew this. And you think you did something wrong or someone failed them. But I'll tell you what, if anyone in this room has kids, you ever experienced a child before, I, I, my son Odin said, um, he used to say, I pooped when he was like three. I pooped. He's five. Now he says, I pooped it. <laughs> says, I pooped it. Oh, yeah, I pooped it. We all do that. Like, I do did. He used to say, I did. Now he says, I do did. It's part of the process. The more language that gets into your brain, the more scrambled it becomes. It works itself out unconsciously to the best of its ability, but that's just kind of what it does. And so the less accurate your students get grammatically, probably the more language they're getting from you. So rather than looking at this as a problem to be fixed, say, oh goodness, this is a high quality problem. There's so much language in there. It's getting all garbled, which means that the natural process is occurring. Mm. So we focus on communication, going back to that word again, right? So I throw at you a whole bunch of examples here that that make me smile, all of which serve a purpose. Someone has just noticed that your house is on fire and they've noticed that you haven't noticed that your house is on fire. Look at all the different examples we have. We have your house is on fire, your house on fire, your house is fire, your house, fire, house, fire, you house on fire, you house, fire, fire, your house. There's a million (laughs) different ways to say that. All of us would say, well, technically it's your house is on fire. Yeah, but did every single one of those communicate in the English language that your house is on fire? The answer is yes. All of those are English. Mm -hmm. It may not be native like to your liking. They are English. English speakers understand what you are saying. Mm. That is communication. That is correct. Don't grade for grammatical accuracy. It won't do what you think it does. Mm -hmm. It won't do it. That's true. You're making me think of um, Vijay Ramjitan, who was on here a few weeks ago talking about pronunciation. And he mentioned about pronunciation, he's fabulous, and mentioned about um, sort of the same thing you're saying with the grammar, like mm. we, the excuse we use with like drill and kill explicit grammar is like, well, not everyone is going to be a sympathetic interlocutor, which it, and it's, and his thing with pronunciation is the same, like, why are we so worried about 
sympathetic listeners, like, I'm sorry, take it back. Why are we so used to like, we adjust people's pronunciation instead of ensuring that more listeners are sympathetic. And so same thing, like that's the excuse we, right? I was like, ah, VJ, my eyes were welling. I was like, ah, like, you're so amazing. Because it's the Brilliant. same thing with grammar. Like we tell kids like, well, you wanna be understandable, but we're putting the onus back on the language user. And if they're saying again, like you house fire and, and it's applicable and it's in the moment, why would we say that that's, and it, and it gets the message across, who and what jerk in their right mind in that moment would be like you said excuse me i think you meant are you kidding me like we need more people to be sympathetic listeners and readers more than we need more people to be exact maybe with whatever we've decided the rules are oh exactly and we also and along those same lines it's i think it's also pretty broken to teach people that to expect that if you are to to encounter a culture other than your own that the people there will be such insufferable monsters that if they right. detect any non-native like language out of your mouth, that their response is going to be like horror and shunning mm -hmm. and like kicking you out or something like, like that's what we think of other people. Yep. That a, an attempt to speak someone else's language is going to be met with like violent outrage. Mm -hmm. If it's not perfect, like it's everything that you, like I'm, I, I love that sentiment. That's the yeah. idea. Oh, the idea like so good like okay. like that's how we're teaching so then what we're what we're kind of tacitly teaching kids is that like is yeah it's an expectation that if you dislike the way that someone speaks that you can just be a total like jerk to them right like it's okay to discriminate against people because of the way that they talk if you dislike their english right like and no 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 okay. mm -hmm. and we model that for them yep which is why i have the this next part mm -hmm. don't correct it and I mean, like, this is a blanket statement. This applies to the classroom, inside, outside. Do not, and I mean, never, ever, ever correct someone else's grammar unless they ask Ooh. you to. I mean, like, period, for mm -hmm. students, for other teachers, for anybody. Man. Never correct someone else's grammar unless they ask you to. Sometimes people ask you to like sometimes I'll do that sometimes when I have kids do a writing assignment or something like a free write. And then I'll say like, Hey, I know some people are into like grammar and stuff and all that. If you want me to edit what you did, I'll do it. Like if you're interested in that, I'll do it, but it's, you don't have to. And there's no grade that like plus or minus. There's no nothing aside, aside from that. If you're just interested in that, I'll do it for you. So I'm available for that if you want that, but if no one wants it, it doesn't happen. It never happens. Mm -hmm. Do not correct other people's grammar unless they ask you to. This is where we lose people. Mm. This is where we lose them. If you're wondering why your program is even bigger than it currently is, this is why. This kills people. Mm -hmm. This is why people say they're not good at languages. They mm -hmm. hate languages. This is why people are terrified of speaking languages. Hell, I'm afraid to speak Latin. Mm -hmm. I won't speak Latin around another Latin teacher. Mm -hmm. I, I am terrified of it. And this is me. Like, this is me. I liked talking in front of people. <laughs> I, 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 used to, I used to get paid money to act in stuff. Like, I like this stuff. You cannot pay me to, like, go to, like, a, to sit at a table with Latin teachers and talk Latin. Nothing in the world do I find more terrifying than having someone unsolicited, like, correct my grammar and humiliate me unsolicited and like mid sentence like how many times have you been saying something you know like joe's joe or janine those are the faces i can see are like pues um me gustaria and someone's like lo que me gustaria and you're like lo, what oh lo okay right um lo what was it lo que now you've lost your whole freaking train of thought like what if we did that to each other like just in normal conversation in the language that we share but people do that too. Like, um, she's gonna take, um, she, you know how people try to do the, like the possessive thing and they try to do it right. And to do it right, it has to sound wrong. Like she's gonna take she and I's car. And there's always someone who's like her and my, like, okay, whatever. You knew what they <laughs> meant, like stop being a jerk. But like, that's a weird concept in English. Like as a native speaker of like her and my, my, uh, I'm going to her, like whatever. But people like, 
yeah, like prescriptively in the middle of a sentence throws off your whole train of thought. And like you said, it's embarrassing because it's typically public. Oh, of course. For that, for the purpose, typically, if it's why it's public, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a nasty thing to do. Yeah. It's rude. It's nasty. And it doesn't do anything. I and mean, that's the other part of it. Like, even if it was, if it was rude and nasty and it did something, then I think there'd be more of a conversation to be had about it. Like, well, how do we make this better? Mm. But it doesn't do <clears throat> those things. Like the language mechanisms of the brain are not responsive to correction. So if I told, if, like, so my, my son has never heard me say the word poop did. Not one time. Sure. Mm. It wasn't like I said poop did. Well, I, I wish I'd come up with poop did, honestly. It's not like I was saying poop did. And then he started copying me. I'm like, oh, got to correct them. Sorry, Odin. Nope, it's not poop did, it's pooped. Not pooped, it is pooped. I could do that all day, every day. Nothing would change. It doesn't work that way. It's part of the developmental process. These things happen. It it has to work itself out on its own, but it's just part of the developmental process. Explicit correction doesn't lead to them doing it correctly later. Like I've linked, at the end, I've linked you to a bunch of researchers who have explored this ad nauseum. And we still have no evidence of any benefit of correction. But yeah. we do have plenty of evidence of the negative impact of it. Like this mm-hmm. stops people from ever considering learning another language. Yeah. That's why That's why we come with people say, I'm not a language person. Or uh, don't ask me to speak anything. Mm-hmm. It's because we did this to them. We mm-hmm. told them that it doesn't matter what they have to say. It just matters that they say it right. And they don't feel like the same way, what is it, like 75, like weird numbers floating around in my head that I think of when you're saying this, like 75% of kids stop playing organized sports after middle school because it's not fun anymore. Yep. Like it's yep. too competitive. So they can't like have fun and express themselves and like be vulnerable in that way and like be competitive and just like it. And the same way that Brene Brown has some research that says 85% of her, like the people she interviewed could remember the exact moment when their creativity was crushed in school. And typically it's an art or a music or a language teacher that said, that's not a house. That's not a sunset. Oh, oh my God. If you guys are drawing sunsets like John, these look more like, you know, the sunset of your art career. (laughs) Like there's sarcasm, there's meanness, there's cruelty. And eight and a half out of 10 people can go, boop, that's when I stopped playing soccer. That's when I stopped playing cello. That's when I stopped liking Spanish is because you embarrassed me and you made me feel small and you made me feel stupid and you made me feel like this is a thing that wasn't for me. Yes, a hundred percent. Always a teacher in Brene Brown's research. They can remember the adult at school that was like, boop, nope, you're not, this is not for you. That's, that's it. That's us. Mm-hmm. that's us we're part of that group we have the power to do that and i'm sure all of us have i'm sure i probably have at some point i mm-hmm. promise you i have at some point i have absolutely mm-hmm. like we, we've all like it's it's it, it doesn't matter what we've done is that now we know what it does we can we can do better but this is this is where it starts these things are like it's these things are very personal it's like art singing writing expressing ourselves language oh. these things are very personal and when you embarrass somebody this way, they are done. They shut down. When, when someone corrects my grammar, um, my response, which I think is a pretty typical response, is to just not talk to that person anymore. Yeah, done. <laughs> I just don't want to talk to that person anymore. Because mm-hmm. they're, it's, that's, I don't want to talk to that person. Yeah. Just like when you correct the kid's grammar, like, so someone said they write, like they do a writing assignment for you and you correct their grammar. The next time you get it, what do they do? they stop talking about anything that has to do with that grammar point that they got off. So like if they're talking about what they want to do tomorrow, suddenly they're talking about what they want to do. Yes. What they wanted to do yesterday. Like suddenly they're no longer talking about what they like to do for fun. They're talking about like what they ate last night. Like you, like they just start to avoid it. Mm -hmm. So just as a practice and again, let this stuff ease into you. Don't feel like you have to do everything all at once, but I'm just throwing this out there as another idea. Don't correct it. Don't correct anybody else's grammar unless they ask you to. Mm-hmm. Just throwing that out there. Throwing that out there. But that doesn't mean you can't answer everybody's questions. That doesn't mean we have to pretend like we don't know anything about grammar or that we don't like grammar. I like grammar. I enjoy grammar. 
I don't think it's necessarily connected to learning another language, but that doesn't mean it's like a completely invalid thing. I like grammar. I find it interesting. So that doesn't mean, so this doesn't mean you have to just pretend like it doesn't exist. So if a student asks me a grammar question, I don't say, oh, we don't do grammar here. No, I answer the question and then we move on. It's not graded. It's not part of the lesson, but it's like if they say, hey, why does that do that? And it's like, oh, it's because of this. It's because that's a different tense that lets us know it's in the past tense but want something that happened in the past, but isn't finished. And if they're super, if they want to geek out hard, I'll be like, well, it's the imperfect tense. And that's actually an indicative. And like, we'll do that <laughs> stuff. But like, if, if someone else in class is like, wait, what? It's like, don't worry about it. We're moving on. But I like where your head's at. So if someone asks me a grammar question, I'll answer it every time. Like, doesn't mean we have to pretend not to. But I try to keep the, the explanations short. And I try to avoid any sort of terminology unless someone asks for them. Because Again, as someone who's gone through the deepest, darkest parts of the of grammar world as a Latin teacher, I've been down to like the darkest depths of this and seen where it goes. Um, grammar ter terminology does not help people understand grammar. Mm -hmm. I've only seen it do the opposite. And I'm a Latin teacher <laughs> with the most grammar background in the world. I have never seen anyone gain understanding through that i've only seen it get worse mm. i didn't notice this until my sixth graders were able to read an entire book in latin and my ap students had no clue even where to start mm. no clue well like a children's story like a really simple children's story no clue even where to start they were just immediately just like they were parsing things like mm. well this has to be a subject well i could be a third declension with an er ending but uh, but then that could also be a Oh, but is that an ad, is that an adverb or is that a comparative? It's like it's it was nothing. They had nothing. The terminology turned them into language analyzers and not into it impeded their understanding. Ultimately, it's mm -hmm. a whole different language in right. and of itself. I think it's interesting, but I would not put it in the same category as learning another language. It's linguistics, which is fun, but it's something different. So I would avoid it if at all possible, mm. but you're going to run into you. All of us have a kid. That's us. We all have that kid who is like, when you're like, uh, if anyone's interested, that's a, uh, that's a gerundive of obligation. And that one kid's like, oh, what's that? Oh, I'm glad you asked. So let's talk <laughs> about gerunds and gerundives. But what actually, I have a strategy that I do so I don't lose everybody else because this is where kids feel alienated and shut out. And they're like, okay, yeah, this, this is where I got to start thinking about what other <laughs> language I might want to take next year. We're connecting. It's getting weird. <laughs> yeah, it's getting weird. It's getting weird. So what I'll do is I'll say like, all right, like I'll tell a kid like, hey, um, time me for 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Everybody else, if you yeah. don't want to hear this, earmuffs. Earmuffs, right. okay? And be like, all right, and go. So what this is, is a gerund is a verbal noun, but a gerund is a, is, a, is a future passive participle. So it's more like an adjective. Um, but so when you combine that in a paraphrastic form with a form of essay, the verb to be, it can connote um, um, obligation. So for example, Carthago de lenda est means Carthage must be destroyed. That is a gerund of obligation. And then time, like, all right. We're back. <laughs> okay, so we're back. And so was, you're going to find that kid. I was just looking at the chat too. And uh, Marty, Marty Saul was my Spanish teacher in high school. And I always said she was like my grammar dealer. Cause I'd be like, <laughs> she'd like, if she had like a trench coat, she'd open it. Cause she, she'd like something random or regular. It'd be like, abria visto. And I'm like, huh, that's interesting. That was what it was when we said like a visto. And she'd be like, you want some more of that? You know, I'm like, yes. Yeah. Like I would, she'd be like slipping me sheets on the side. Like, page 75 it's not in your workbook but it's in the fancy workbook thank you like i'd be yelling from the ap workbook like getting ready for the ap test i'd be like it's when it still had the grammar section and it would say like use the plus quam perfect and i was like what's the plus quam the plus would have great thanks you know whatever <laughs> you should be like whatever and i was fine and here we are we survived like you can be a word nerd and love the grammar and not know what it's called or some i'm embarrassed in front of colleagues sometimes they'll go oh so you teach them the somebody said something the other day and i was like hmm, <laughs> i'm gonna need an example and it wasn't the impersonal say it wasn't like say habla where it was just like the but it was like that kind of and she, and she was like kind of horrified <laughs> I was like, i'm gonna need another example and she was like 
you know, like that I was like, oh, is that what that's called? Yeah, totally. They see that, but I, I have no, I don't, I don't call it that. I just call it no, what it's not helpful. You've got what it, <laughs> exactly, exactly, right? But, the, but you, you, you nailed it right there, right? You can, you can even be a word nerd and not know all like the, the, the various bizarre terms for all these yeah. things, right? And not care. Like you can connect still on that level. Mm-hmm. But even if you are that like mega, mega, like I want to like sit with a grammar book and I want to look at some endings because I like it. I have a whole bunch of stuff I can give anybody who wants any of that stuff. Every, I always have one. I always have one. And that person usually hates me the first like week. <laughs> then I can't get rid of them after that week. Now, like they, now they're just like, they're, they're like, whenever you have like the class ends or whatever, they're there. Every time there's like you no know, office hours or like whatever block, they're there every time. <laughs> but it's this, it's you tell them, like you take them aside for that first day, like, like you get all this stuff, right? This is real easy for you, right? Good, right. <laughs> but you're like, you're like me into that grammar stuff, right? Yes. Okay. Just like, yeah, yeah, just like that. It was just like, you know, like, like the dredge cup. I'm like, you want some grammar? I got some grammar for you. Want some? I got some for you. And then you're hooked. I, and then I you're like, like, like it was like, right. I was gonna say it was like preterite would have to be crass, but like preterite was like a gateway drug. I was like, okay. Okay, did you say we? I'm here for it. Ise? Oh, of course, ear is irregular, isn't it always? <laughs> and then oh, we, we have got like we too. inside jokes. <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. Like, boop, boop, boop. You're catching what they're throwing, but that's one out of 36. Yeah, but that's exactly right. And that doesn't mean that we have to tell that kid, like, uh, aha, we've moved on. You're no longer, like, language is no longer for you. Right. It's, no, they're, it's still for them, but we give them plenty of stuff to do outside of class, plenty of it. I got mountains of stuff for them. If you're interested in this stuff, I got all of it for you. You want to stay after class and talk about it? I'll talk about it with you. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. Mm-hmm. So answer all the questions, answer all of them, have those beautiful relationships with those kids. But you don't have to start the conversation, nor does the Ooh. curriculum or what you aim to do have to have anything to do with that. It's like when a kid asked me about basketball in class and I'll stop and go on a tangent, and we'll talk basketball for a few minutes. It's like that. It's, mm-hmm. we can talk about basketball. It's fun. I love basketball, yeah. but I don't like, it's not going to lead to, I was going to be like a test or something. It, I'm not expecting them to learn Latin from that conversation about basketball that we have in English, mm-hmm. but like someone asked like, yeah, nothing wrong with that. So you don't have to hide it like that. Answer the questions. That's part of the, don't hide it. You can answer all the questions. Which leads me to, I think, the most profound point that I have for you, which is probably don't do it. (laughs) If you can get away with it, probably don't do it. This is what I came up with. And and again, not everybody is me. We're all different. We're all in different places out there and much love and respect for everybody. I haven't taught grammar, like explicit grammar in years. I haven't. Once I got the ability, like the, in a situation where I didn't have to, I haven't done it like at all and the difference has been staggering because the time that i used to spend like smashing my head against the wall trying to teach people grammar concepts it was time i wasn't spent you know talking to them in latin um giving them stories in latin Mm. like communicating with them in latin and what they're able to do now is something that if you had told me about it when i was in graduate school i would have said it was impossible impossible what they're able to do right now and why i say probably don't do it is because of this do you need explicit grammar knowledge to acquire another language so the answer is no that is a definitive absolute no all human beings have language the field of grammar is not as old as the human species Mm. most human beings have no i don't i don't have much explicit grammar knowledge in english not a ton (laughs) not really but it doesn't matter. You, and the, the you're a well-read unrelated. person. Like you're a well-read person who loves words and text and communicating and you communicate beautifully. Like it's also not like an education thing, like a level of, we do all these things where we level people and we define people. Like you can love to read and not know what the, whatever the thing that Kelly said a minute ago was um, some, I don't know, grammatical word that I don't know, transitive. Like you can uh, do like, these are not mutually exclusive. It's like when we define classic books, like, okay, whatever, classic for whom next? Like we might need to refresh some of these boxes that we put people in and put ourselves in. Totally. I mean, absolutely. 
Yeah, the, it's because, because of the fact that this is unnecessary, we don't have to be cutting people who can't do it. Most people don't. Most people do not do well with explicit grammar knowledge. Most people don't. Again, the ones who do are all language teachers right now. Right here. Most people do not do well with this, which is okay because you don't need to to acquire another language. So that's why I say probably don't do it is my advice ultimately. Because does it help you acquire another language? No. I mean, that's the other that's the other kind of dirty secret of this. It doesn't actually do what we think it does. Mm -hmm. Studying grammar doesn't actually make us better at grammar, which is the real funny thing about it. <laughs> it doesn't make us better. That's the thing. Even Actful itself laid that out there. Like you can learn all the explicit grammar facts you want. It doesn't necessarily make you more grammatically accurate in your speech or writing. In fact, it doesn't appear to. Mm. But is it ever helpful? Sure. When you are, I think it's Stephen Krashen lays it out. It's like when you're editing your own writing, it, it can be tremendously useful not to memorize it because what the hell? Why would you memorize it? I don't memorize English. Like, no, like if, if I don't know something in English grammar, I look it up. Mm -hmm. I've got grammar. I guess I'm here. Latin. I, I write stuff in Latin. I've got grammar references. Why would I pretend like I don't? It's just for like for refining like presentational writing. You can do that. But the idea of memorizing it, that's, that has no value. The it doesn't, none of that's connected. It's like taking like a, I don't know. It's like, um, it's like trying to charge your phone by like shoving a slice of pizza in it. It's like, it's, these are just not related in any way, shape or form. It's too, it's, your phone isn't hungry. It doesn't need food. <laughs> it's that same thing. Like your brain doesn't need your brain does not need explicit grammar knowledge to acquire anything. It, it's com the memorization process and the acquisition process are not connected. And like I think anatomically. Tell ourselves that they are. It's because the rules and the acronyms and the things were made for teaching, not learning. Oh like yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's the difference is we focus so often on like, how do I teach subjunctive? Well, there's an acronym weirdo. And like, okay, great. And <laughs> you know, I love me some weirdo money, but like weirdo is for the weirdos. Like keep weirdo for the weirdo. We're the weirdos. Like, tell me more. Uh, okay. I probably couldn't define weirdo now if I tried. It was <laughs> uh, I remember the O was Ohala, um, but like, that's it. Uh, yeah, it would take me wishes, wishes. Uh, anyway, it would take me a second. And, and that's, if you know your colleagues teach weirdo and you know, they give some day one of level whatever review tests and the kids have to do well then don't like you said don't get fired and don't be like the one in your department who's like no like all hoity-toity like no i don't teach whatever whatever but like also realize that we're focusing on teaching and not learning you know it might look Boom. like they're learning what does bill van patten say they might exhibit language-like behavior yes in a number of contexts where like and that hit home whenever anytime he says that i'm like uh it looks like they're going like soy eres es somos son nailed it uh you know all the accents over estas and esta whatever but like what are but like you said you get them in context or get them now without google translate like actually talking and they're like um uh, uh yo uh um yo uh, yo hablar ayer and you're like wait but you did the box like you did it perfectly you know but it's totally we're doing it we're focusing on teaching and not learning which is problematic it's, at least for me it has been dude, exactly like a hundred percent like a hundred percent like it's it's that's what it like all that stuff is there so that you can sell four editions of a textbook as opposed to two or yeah. three yeah so you just stretch that stuff out like it has nothing to do with teaching or learning or any of that stuff people make it don't have to right. care about teachers right. it's, it's you, you get as many editions out as you can and keep keep getting them checks mm -hmm. Which is my final bit of advice to you before before I answer a couple of questions and have to bounce to my next gig. I always leave you this one. Don't get fired. But this is what you can do. Do what you have to do. So this is for all of you who are in the situation. So what a lot of you are thinking, this doesn't apply to me because there's someone who's ahead of me who's like a psychopath who is like, they're going to make my life a living hell. I work with two of them. They're awful. So the people who are like, well, I didn't prepare you for that. I didn't prepare your kids and can't do it. I didn't prepare your kids for this and that. First of all, I think that if you expect another teacher to prepare kids for your class, you should have your teaching license revoked. 
it is our job to prepare ourselves for the students that we're going to get. We teach the students that we have, not the ones that we think we deserve. We teach who comes into our room, and that's what we prepare ourselves for. Nobody else should be teaching sixth graders like they're eighth graders because I get them in eighth grade. Mm. None of that stuff should be happening. That's not how any of this works. But somehow, some of us work with people like that, and some of them have seniority or authority in one way or another. I've worked with terrible monsters in my first job, like grotesque creatures, and I have learned a lot from navigating that those, those awful beings. So number one, do what you have to do. And I mean, have to do find out specifically what is expected of you. So if you have that colleague, email them today and say, Hey, I'm not sure that everyone's going to be ready for next year. Do you have like an assessment like that you give early on in the year? Like when they first show up to kind of see where they're at? Because I want to make sure that I'm aligning with what you're doing. Get a copy of that assessment, teach them specifically how to do that assessment. Give them practice versions of that exact assessment because the dirty secret is they're not going to remember it. Nobody remembers yeah. it. Some kids will rememorize it. Nobody remembers it. It doesn't matter if you spent all year, every year from the time they were two, nobody knows it. And you ask them, they'll tell you they don't know it. They're rememorizing it or they're not and they're flunking it. Find out specifically. Take pictures of it, document it, scan it. Anything you need to do. I created a PowerPoint one time. that was like 40 slides just as evidence to prove that these things had occurred. Mm. I, it mm -hmm. gets bad out there. So do what you got to do to protect yourself. Yeah. The, the, well, and again, kids do us dirty. Kids get in that next level and they're like, I had Senor Perotti Brown. He never spoke Spanish at Joe's face. <laughs> we never oh, had quizzes. Never. But my friend had Senora Ferguson, had Profe, and all they do is quizzes. And it's like, they literally have the same grade book. Like that, that's not like people believe, our colleagues believe kids and kids do us dirty. And like, that's, they just constantly, who's believing kids? Like figure, exactly, figure out what your colleagues mm. are doing, figure out exactly like what the expectation is going to be. And then like, it's backward design, but like social, you know, like, but it's like to not get fired backward design. Like, let me figure out what I got to do. Exactly. And then, that's it. Got to get that. You got to get that paper trail because people, because exactly. Cause they'll, cause they'll, they'll do you like that. Yeah. And of course, for any of us, when that happens to us, you'll be like, we didn't learn anything last year. Yeah, you did. I bet you learned a lot more than, you know, anyhow, moving on. And then of course, like, then they look at each other like, ah, shit, shit that didn't work. <laughs> All right, so we're back to, <laughs> and then and then there's all kind of cool stuff they can do, and you're like, okay, like yeah, we 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 know what that's all about. Absolutely, and if you but, share lesson plans, your colleagues see what you do, and so you're like, dude, you literally have all my slides. I have a whole two weeks on Predator Imperfect. Why are they here. saying that they didn't do it right? They're liars. It's here, lie. and that's the thing is that if it's explicit grammar knowledge, they like no matter what you did, they weren't going to know it when they got there. Yeah. I mean, it's just the way sure. that it works, which is why I advocate for keeping the stuff separate. Like there's a lot of cool ways to like teach, ex to teach grammar, like with the expectation that's going to come like, you know, they're going to go to go to explicit grammar course from like a, a communicative based course and they're going to crush it. Probably not because no one really crushes grammar based courses except for a few people. Right. So I don't even think it's worth trying to make it look cool. Like, it's just a different thing. It's like, it's like when you have to test for like, we have to prep for standardized tests. It's like, so language class has stopped and we are now going to do preparation for high school or preparation for next year. Here's some of the stuff that you're going to be doing. Here's what it looks like. And we're going to prepare specifically for this, but keep it separate. I wouldn't try to go through hoops to try to make it work because you're honestly, you're just, you, you just, you're just piling whipped cream on that poop hoping yep. that is going to turn into like a delicious cake, but it's put more and more like probably some fondant, put some fondant all over the poop. Like it's still poop. So you, like, pooped you, pooped you might as well just shovel that poop and throw it where it needs to go. It doesn't need to be like a, like a gourmet cake. Like it just, it is what it is. Yep. Keep it away from your cake. Use your cake stuff for the cake. And then just say, ah, got to shovel this poop. So uh, here's the poop. Yep. So Amen. that's, that's the end of what, of what I got. Uh, yeah 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 that's the end of what i got so once again the principles you all get a copy of this i'll give it to you um there's links to further research you can do so you don't have to take my word for all this stuff 
<laughs> and hopefully this will help reframe the way that you look at things. I think I have, I think I have time to answer like one question, I think, and then I got to, and then I'm supposed to be on another thing. <laughs> I'm just going to eat you forever. I think we've got, um, we, so the chat very lively, which is really nice. And um, okay. there was only one question, but I think we got it answered with uh, like a resource. I believe it was X. Now I can't remember the order X D X D L M. And I can't remember what it was. It was a question about like feedback or grades or homework or something. Um, and, oh, Janae wants to know, what about staying in the target language? Oh, ah. yeah, Claudia. <laughs> Sorry, Claudia. Oh, Claudia, okay, so, all right, yeah. so what about staying in the target language? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, well, I can tell you what I do with that one. So I think Actful's on to something with the 90%. I mean, of course, sometimes it's 60, sometimes it's Amen. 92, sometimes it's three. This year, sometimes it's like, one yeah, or zero okay, maybe oh, i got oh yeah i got some dude don't worry about this year this year you're just lucky to be alive like we're just we're, there's some there's some there's some goose eggs i'm, I'm, I'm dropping out yeah yep. it doesn't count doesn't count so yeah but i think the important thing about the target language stuff is that i wouldn't view 10 percent as a minimum i would tend to view it more as a maximum that you still want to be able to use english to establish meaning, if that's the common language, in whatever common language or languages mm -hmm. you have, absolutely use them to establish meaning. Mm. So if like bibere in Latin means to drink. Now, like uh, there are there are schools of thought where people teach you to say, well, you can't say, you can't, you can't, can't use English ever. So you have to like find a way to like find a drawing and then do a dance and circum low cute and all this other stuff like that and you're like but don't say this. and you're like oh not that oh not that not that no like you're playing charades with it and like it's like right. what the hell are you doing you speak the same language why that why the hell are you doing that a, nothing's happening with that if they, if they say like a you just say bibre means water and you write that bibre means water bibre means water okay now we can talk about water and stuff in the target language and instead of spending 20 minutes trying to say well it's not glass it's not the glass it's not the person it's right the lick uh not the liquid right. it's the, the people are meant to drink like it's a, it's right. a aqua means water like mm -hmm. it's like yeah it's like yeah so i view that as a as a maximum is like the is something like 90 percent. So you still want to be able to use a common language to be able to communicate meaning so then you can go because you because i said if you're only communicating in the target language like a hundred percent of the time then you run the risk of being totally incomprehensible. And then what you end up having is you just have like this experience, which is terrifying. Like you walk in the class, it was like, ah, what do you think, Marco? And the person's like, oh. I've walked in the class like that, and the kids look at this the entire time. Like just the terror. Yeah. And they call it, and then like they, they call it someone. Like, uh yo yo uh so uh like it's terrifying like i don't know what's happening because no one stopped to say like oh this means this like oh okay mm -hmm. and if that's off limits you're like well i don't know what they're saying i have no way to find out what they're saying mm. i'm just listening to sounds coming out of somebody's mouth right, right. now like the reason that people go blah, 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 if they hear another language is because that's literally what it's, I mean, they're being mocking and, and cruel, but like, that's what it sounds like when we just stay sometimes when it's not comprehensible. It's like, I hear you, but I'm not, I can't, like, I can't process what you're saying. Like, that's where the word barbarian comes from, from no the way. Greek word barbaros, which was, it literally just means the people who go like this, bad, 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 bad. Barbaros. Yeah, they call them the Barbaroi, the people, the Baba people, blah, 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 blah. Because uh, oh, they say that's what they do. They just go, blah, blah, blah. Or like how like the Russians call the, call the Germans the Nimietsky, means the deaf mutes because they don't speak Russian. Oh my God. It's like that, that's, 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 that's how we respond to hearing languages we don't understand. Is like throughout <laughs> all the time, we're just like, I don't know, it sounds like, blah, 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 blah. it's right. like, but if someone says, oh no, that means onion, like, oh. oh. It's not blah blah blah. One of those words means Onion. okay. <laughs> but that's the thing is that we can, is that we have to be able to take those opportunities to to 
let people in. Right. Well, so that they can experience it. Like a couple of sculpts ago, Joe, I think it was the sculpt Myr Myrtle Beach where, I think it was Myrtle Beach. Nah, it might've been the one before that um, where Marty Abbott, when she was executive director of Actful, like just casually in their Actful session dropped like, eh, we just made up 9010. Like there's not really any research behind it. And we were yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> I kind of figured that one. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> what? Dude, and everyone in the session was like, you... And she's like, I mean, like, there's no sign. Like, it just seemed like not a hundred. Like, just like, like, I think like Kelly or just somebody put in the chat, like, not a hundred, because like a hundred's like not real helpful, but like also not half, because that's probably not enough. So like 90, 10, and then kept on with the presentation. And we're like, no, I need you to go back to one. <laughs> like, it's a core practice. <laughs> yeah. oh, awesome. Insane. Yay, John, thank you so much. Gratias ago. Um, oh, so see, I don't even know. Say what me hello. I know no, that's perfect. Yes. Um, we super appreciate your time. And I know you're going like back to back. So we double appreciate your time and all the things. And um, hopefully this wasn't too scintillating for anybody. But I mean, again, like so just some amazing points to really look at what we're doing and why we're doing it. Are we focusing on teaching or are we focusing on learning? Are we questioning what our colleagues are doing are we just going in lockstep you know what are all the all the levels of nuance so thank you so much and and i super appreciate you and all of you who were able to attend um that everything will be posted yeah janae so it'll be posted back um on that central hub that i just put in the chat so i will post everything that john sends me as well as all of the resources and the recording so it'll all be there yay thank you so much, john thank you so much everybody Absolutely. i really appreciate it mwah, mwah. Happy Thursday. We can do it, everybody. You can do it. Yeah. We're doing it.